Today's episode of The Chop Shop is brought to you by our good folks over at Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code THECHOPSHOP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com using the code THECHOPSHOP. Are you kidding me? My God. Welcome to the Shop Shop. I am Eddie James. Next to me is my brother from another mother. Trash his hands and all the tri state. DJ React. Yes, sir. React. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like I always say, we have some legends, but this yeah, guy yeah. is truly a, a legend, staple, worldly DJ producer um one of the nicest guys um got the brightest smile on the planet too man we go way back man and we're gonna get into it man i am so happy to have him man like so many questions throughout the years that um we've been peers but really not have known each other but we'll get into that man ladies and gentlemen at the chop shop we have dj spinner we have yeah. a real DJ in the building, Woo. people. Yep. Oh, my God. Thank you. Salute for coming on the show, sir. Appreciate Yo, it very, very salute. much. Pleasure to be yeah. here. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Yes. And by the way, that flip, I've been I've been chasing him for about four years. <laughs> and it's, it's the, it is, I'm telling you, we're going to play it again later on. Uh-huh. It is the illest flip. One of the illest flips I heard just mangled the records. Just <laughs> And that record's been used a million times, too. Never heard it like that. You know, I made it with the intention of shopping it and, oh you know, having somebody bust some rhymes on it, but it just never, never came to fruition. And I did that beat probably around oh, so oh eight. The pads, you just had them on the pads, they had the chops exactly. on the pads and just how can I just mangle this record? And, uh, exactly. Oh, exactly. Perfect, bro. Strict, strict, strictly three thousand right there. Yeah, uh, man. Oh man, thank you so much for coming on once again, uh, Spinner. There are a lot of DJs and a lot of producers um, that I've come across and and listened to in my lifetime that had impact. And uh, this interview is important because I never got a chance to tell you when uh, I first moved down here to New York, the tri-state area. Um, because I was born and raised in Syracuse and I went to Syracuse University. I didn't really have, I was automatically in the underground. We're talking about 95. So the underground presence was, uh, heavy, you know, late future flavors, um, stretching by Beto, you know, and I distinctly remember your records. You were, you, I'd say you and Sean J period. And we had Sean, he did the very first show for the chop shop. You and Sean J, for me, were like, okay, these are the guys that I see within my range that are um, almost on the same level. And I've seen your, your I've seen, seen your ascension and like in real time, man. I was like, this guy's amazing, man. So um, I know you started DJing, uh, I think the tender age of 11, man. Um, can you tell us about your early days in Brooklyn being a DJ and then, uh, transitioning to uh production wow well you know i started dabbling with 12s t- uh, turntables i should say not 12s but turntables um i'd say we really i was really more like 12 13 to be to be exact mm-hmm. and i was influenced by you know local djs in my neighborhood um in interviews i've i've been mentioning the local dj crew uh that came up on my block in Crown Heights, they were called the Laser Rock Disco, and they used to play all the block parties in Crown Heights. Um, I just actually learned that they did parties beyond my block on President Street. Um, they were all over New York and New York City, mm-hmm. Brooklyn and New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, and they even shared the same DJ space as Grandmaster Flowers. They, they were DJing in the same venue at one point. You know, these guys were around since 77 to the early 80s. So I watched them, you know, they were big influences on me mm-hmm. as well as like any local party that was happening in somebody's basement or, you know, 
whatever. Like just, it was part of my surroundings. And of course, radio played a big influence. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 uh, <clears throat> I really loved listening to early mix, you know, radio show mixes. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking like the days of 92 KTU and WBLS, yeah. Kiss FM, Shep Petty Bone. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. There was there was a grand ma- there was a grand mixer that recently transitioned. His name was Ted Courier. He was like probably the first disco DJ on radio, mm-hmm. um, right before Tony Humphreys, um, right before right before Shep Pettibone. Yeah, um, who who actually <clears throat> went on to went on to produce. You know what I mean? Like he Ted Courier mm-hmm. was the producer for Boogie Boys. Oh yeah, yeah. That he was, did. Yeah, you ain't yeah. fresh. He did Fly Girl. He did all those records. Yeah, Fly Girl. But, yeah, he, was, yeah. but he started off as he started off as a DJ, and I was able to um, connect with him mm-hmm. uh, about about ten years ago when we did this uh, Red Bull Radio New York City Radio documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, learned a lot from listening to people like him. So you know, I was always into records, always into DJing, and then in the eighties. You know, I felt like the next progression for a producer was definitely becoming, for a DJ is definitely becoming a producer. So I started going into recording studios around in 1985, mm-hmm. um, you know, with, I was part, of, I was part of a hip hop group since, since 85, you know, we, okay. you know, with, with <laughs> friends that I came, friends that I came up with, which, if, which evolved into Jig Masters nah. in the nineties. So I've been messing around in the studio since 85. Trust me. I know, I know what it's, I know what it's like to be in those early, um, those early hip hop. <laughs> yeah. Those early and I used to rhyme. Groups. And I used to rhyme too. I Did was actually you? rapping. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, I was actually, I, but I hated my voice every time I heard my voice in playback, especially. Especially in 85, my voice hadn't fully changed yet, and it was wild high. Like, yeah, <laughs> I had yeah. a crazy high-pitched voice. <laughs> Wait, um, well, I mean, what, were you like, <laughs> were you spinner back there? Were you like, you know, I'm not going to give you a government, but were you like, V-Nice? Hey, V-Nice, what up? Get on the nah, I, I didn't, You know, what's funny is I didn't, I didn't have, I, I, you know, at one point, you know, everybody was a ski yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody had ski attached to their name. <laughs> All right. Yeah, my um, I, I called myself Vince Ski at one point. Ah, uh, they say okay, that's yeah. dope. N- not hey, as yo, a rapper, Vince, but put up, get on the mic and show me what's up. I'm Vince. <laughs> nice, I'm on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. So you know, just just like most people who were coming up in that area, we would era we were trying to get on. You know, yeah. by any means necessary. Yeah. Um, and we pause course, people DJing back too. Oh, for sure. I yeah. got still got all my old cassettes with pause tape loops and stuff Ooh, on it. Still got them. Wow. Man. One day I'm gonna put those up on on the on the gram. Yeah. I also you, have I actually I also have all my practice tapes. I used to record myself uh when I was learning how to DJ and mixing yeah. and blending and putting two records together and early cuts and all of that, not even that tight. I have all those recordings. Oh, I have man. them all. So during that that time, do you ever do you remember you said you mentioned Shep Pettibone and he, he got into um producing? Did he, he, I think he worked with Madonna too, right? Was it? Oh he, yeah, he did Vogue. He did Vogue. That's why I know the name, right? Um, but do you remember remember the Latin Rascals? Like the hell like, yeah, yeah, like, hell yeah. So they were hot like right before Red Alert and yes. Chuck Chill Out got on. They were the dudes. They yeah. were the ones. They would like it do the master the mix. Right? I remember there was like one time like because I. I, my cousin, you know, lived in, lives in the Bronx, and and um, I got a tape from him coming down here. And I remember because I was pause taping, and I remember got the it was like a master mix. They were like five minutes of funk and all those yep. records. That's the that's the most legendary one that they did for <sighs> for hip hop. They had AJ Scratch. They yes. had it's it's yours. They had uh, Fantasy Three. It's your rock. Man, I memorized that joint. I, t- I, t- I, t- I taped it on the radio when it aired, and I listened to that tape over and over and one over of, again. One of that- the greatest, one of the greatest mixes I've ever heard. It, it literally put the battery in my back. Let me tell you something, man. Those dudes were ahead of their time, and they did things with tape that cannot be duplicated, even with the technology that we have now. Like it, it because you had to the way we think about making beats with limitations on the old machines, they were doing things that we would do on the SP 1200, you know, or better 
with real to real machines. And every time you heard something repeat and, and, you know, these shotgun type edits, they had to record, they had to record all those pieces over and over and over and over again to, in order to, to edit them and put them together. Every cut had to be precise. And it's, it's a science to it, bro. Like it's, it's nothing that my, it's mind blowing stuff. It's mind blowing. You know, your early, your earlier days, um, you were pause mixing and then, um, and then uh, your transition into production, um, drum machines. Talk about the drum machine equipment that you had and stuff like that. So I didn't own actual machines for a long time. Uh, I learned how to use them going into the studios. Um, and I didn't start, I didn't really start on my own machines until 90, I would say 93, 93, yeah, around 93. Um and the machines of choice was the SP twelve hundred and the Akai nine hundred and fifty. The nine the the SP twelve hundred that I that I got was actually from Todd Terry. The, after I did man. the Todd Terry the bounce record, the Todd Terry gave me his SP twelve hundred after I did that bounce record, and it's the same machine that he used for his all his earlier records. Man. So all that Todd, all the black, the black ride, Todd Terry project, Royal House, yeah, girl out, girl out, house, you, all that stuff. The machine that he did those records on are in my is in my room right oh now. Oh my god, <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, man. And, and 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 you know what? The bounce record, I did that before I had the actual machine. Okay. That was a pause tape. That was a pause tape idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I had and I had and I had a Digitech seven point six sampler. Oh this little rack rack unit. I remember yeah, with, I remember that. I had the Digitech right, five thousand, the the eight thousand Digitech. It was like the little square pedal uh yep. guitar pedal thing. And yep, I remember I had to that. edit manually. But that's but that's how with that Digitech is how I made beats for a long time. So, you know, you I would just loop pieces lay it down on my eight track i had a uh eight track um task cam cassette porter studio team task so it's so it's so it's literally <laughs> loop lay the beat down yeah you know like drums find the drums first yeah. loop the drums lay that down find the loop you know bpm it you know match the bpm with the turntable loop that find yeah. the piece lay that down on top of the beat on a second track come back find another sound lay that down filter bass lines yeah. EQ, All lay day, that yeah. down, and then if and then there's like if there's little tiny chops or whatever, I'm literally hitting the button, yeah, triggering it with my finger, and printing that to tape. See, I was and doing mine a and, dumb way, like like literally, like what you just said to me, <laughs> what you said to me, man. I I was literally doing mine the stupid way. I was literally drum machine and like and t- <laughs> literally tapping the sample for three minutes the first sample for like three minutes and if you messed up that's what i'm talking about okay. yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about okay. same thing same, yeah, kind of same okay. idea yeah it was it was absolutely uh i mean it was tedious i mean it's tedious but you know you got sharp working that way because by the time you got machines you know you're unstoppable yeah because you you didn't you didn't you didn't did all the hard work already doing it the other way so to our audience man we have to put things into context too you mentioned the, the record bounce um um a lot of people do not know that your this record will live forever it's it it's forever one of the one of the greatest party records on the planet um anytime you play it Every time I play it, um, it's on. That's when the party uh, it literally starts, or either you can play it in the middle and people are going crazy. When I found out that you did this record, um, I was already out of um out of out of out of college. However, I'm gonna rewind real quick. I I first learned about DJ Spinner because I went to Syracuse University and you went to Binghamton. And I believe you, I think you DJed one of a few parties up at Syracuse. I don't know if you did a Greek freak I, of ours. I did. I did. Yes. Yeah. And I, I remember I was like, first of all, I didn't DJ it. And I was like, well, if I'm not DJing, I'm like, 
I'm like, who is DJing right now? I was like, Kelly's <laughs> killing it. And I see, I actually see a younger, a young DJ Spinner. And I was like, who is this dude, man? And then I remember f- going to um, back and back and forth to your parties in Binghamton. I mean, this is, this is just, we can't make this shit up, man. Like crazy. Yeah. I don't, do, do you remember um, the third bass concert? At Binghamton, we um I think it was in ninety one. Uh, Third base, and- yeah, v- yeah, vaguely, yeah, vaguely, yeah. yeah, I do. Like, cause, cause we were actually managed by uh Pete Nice and um uh, my cousin and I. I think uh Karis One was there that night. He, I think it was Karis yeah, One. One did come up. Yep, yeah, Karis One and uh Third Base. I don't know if you DJ or not, but I do. Re- I just re- I remember when I tell you people he was killing it so this fast forward to this record um you know I'm like the man party record and then when I heard that you know the, the name Spinner uh Spinner did it and I was like oh my god like this dude man you know because it's it wasn't competition but it was just like it was competition like who do I need to surround myself with or tr- sort of compete with in these those days but undeniably one of the greatest party records ever created. I started DJing in 97, 98. This was the first record I ever bought. And what? Yeah. Real story. Wow. Are you the, kidding me? That's I swear crazy. to God. <laughs> and to God. The first <laughs> piece of the, yeah, the first piece of vinyl that I ever bought, it was at the music factory on Fordham Road. I'll never I'll never forget it because it was the first day specifically I remember because I bought doubles. Right. This is when I first started DJing. And I just remember hearing Flex on the radio, just <laughs> just mu- mutilating this this record. And I was like, man, I'm going to go home and I'm going to attempt to do exactly what this dude is doing on the radio with this record. <laughs> so. So anyways, yes, this was the first piece of vinyl I ever bought. And I still have it before even before even still. play it. Um, what like d- d- did you notice that? Did you know the impact of this record when you did it? Like, how, like first of all, when you did it and um, you pressed it up, or was it? Th- what, what label was it through? First of it all, was fr- it was on Freeze. It was on Freeze. Todd Terry's label, Freeze Records. And I didn't know. I actually no way to no no one really knows. Some you might have an idea, but you don't really know how big a record's gonna be. Right. Or sometimes you think a record's gonna be big and you're disappointed. But I, I really didn't know what that impact was, but I found out real quick <laughs> because it blew up. It blew up instantaneous, like instantly yeah. it blew up. I, I mean in, insane. Like like remember, do you remember when Put Your Hands When My Eyes Can See came out in ninety seven? Like it was like over and over. But I'm telling you right now that bounce record, man, automatically in the in the, in all those party joints. Let me clear my throat. Blah blah blah. Bounce that bounce record was one of the original records, man. Um, did you get all your money for that? Did they pay you? Man, you, you you know the SP twelve hundred was part of okay, all right, part of the deal, but not. I didn't ask for it. Like <laughs> it was like it was almost like oh, we're not gonna pay you, but here, take this machine, and I'm happy with that. You know why? Because you know because I mean? because peace shouts to touch here. Because you know uh, they were they were like man, this record is man every week. And I did like, get and I did and I did get an upfront check, but it was really small. Right, <laughs> and and not and not and not for nothing, not for nothing. You know, there's a lot of samples in that joint. Oh yeah, yeah. you didn't have to clear and, those and, either. Yeah. And, and and I mean, of course, you know, they sh- technically should have been cleared, but it was kind of released as a promo only thing for DJs. Very, very, you know, obsolete kind of presentation on the record. No artwork. It almost looks like a bootleg, and that's why nobody really knows what label it's on. But but free but freeze pressed it up. I remember that shit being sold out everywhere. Yeah, too. it was gone for a while. Yeah, it was hard mm-hmm. to get for a while. I couldn't it find that rock and soul. I remember that. I was like, man, I, like I, I had. I think I had like one record. I just like. <laughs> But it brings me back to like when I first started DJing, man. Like, you don't, this shit is crazy to me, bro. It's crazy. Crazy. 
Yeah. But well produced too. Cause yeah, you got the the top villain. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just on point, B. Do you ever? Do, I mean, when you hear it, like when you're in the club, do you ever just like like chuckle a little bit? <laughs> like, oh, bro, listen, I was I was uh, at the Barclays Center. I'm forgetting who we who I went to see, but um, Flex was playing between the groups, and he dropped it, bro, and it was like the place exploded. Mm-hmm. This was recently. Still. This is maybe like yeah, this was like yeah. a, c- a couple of months ago, yeah. to the point that people thought he made that record. A lot of people thought he made the record because around that time he was making party rec- party break records too. That's right. Um, but yeah, I, I still get goosebumps, man. Of course. Oh um, man, just it's, it's a, I mean, it's a classic. This was like one of the original party records, man. It like, was one of them. Yeah, you know, shouts to Crook and Clan AV8 records. Uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the AV8 breaks, you know, came after this. You know, I, I feel like that this record really influenced all that that whole movement. The very first one was my man Kenny Dope, Buckethead, Super Cat, yes. oh Easy Super Cat. Dope. That's the, f- and he actually. So there's a there's a line here, um, there's a through line here. So Todd and Kenny grew up together. Todd, Kenny did a lot of records for Freeze as well. Okay. And yeah. You know, Screechy Dan and you know House Joints. Yeah. You know, and I met Kenny. During this time, right after this bounce record was made, around you know around the around the freeze period, I've been telling this story, so you might see this online in another interview or two. But the the SB twelve hundred that I got from Todd had used to have this sticker, this sticker running across the top of it that said Todd Terry still rocks. Um. In '98, me and Kenny Dope went to go dig in in uh, in, in Portland, buying records in Portland. It was you know Portland till this day is one of the greatest cities for digging. And I told them about you know the the SB1200 story and the sticker, and he was like, "Yo, do you know who made that sticker?" I made that sticker. I put that sticker on Todd's machine. So it was like full circle at that point. <laughs> Wow. And another thing is I met Todd prior to this freeze period. There's a sto- a studio out in Coney Island, uh Tony D studio. Okay. Where where Search made his first record, mm-hmm. where Jungle Brothers did some of their records. Uh the first album was recorded there. Mm-hmm. Um I met I met Todd while he was mixing the Jungle Brothers record, the um the inspect the Inspector Gadget Bad Boys record with yeah, King Love was rec- yeah. was recorded there as well, which Todd Terry produced. A lot of people don't know Todd Terry Ooh, actually did, did that he? record. That record yeah. was crazy. So I, so, I, so I met Todd around that time. That had to be like eighty seven, right? And I had to remind Todd of that that we actually encountered. When we met during the when we re encountered during the freeze period, I reminded him that we had met back in the eighties, like earlier. So there's like this whole connection <laughs> with with Kenny, and Kenny is like you know, like full circle that's my, too, right? That's, Almost that's my, like, it's my sensei. Yeah, oh that's my, my that's my sensei. The great Kenny, dope man. I mean, man, I mean, if we can, you know, we yeah, we had to put we had to put him on the list know, too. He did that Bucketheads record too. Yeah, oh, that's what yeah. I was just saying. That's yeah. the, the super record. That mm-hmm. was the first one. That was the big party break record that basically changed the game and right. set the tone for those kind of joints. Yeah. I mean, speaking of party records, too, we just lost a great legend. Um, it would, I mean, if not the the greatest party record ever, the 900 number. Um, yeah. Um, you know. The 45 the King, 40, man. Uh, Mark 45 King, man. Um, our, you know. Shouts goes out to the you know his family. Our condolences. I really don't want to go past um, the mark that you made with the Jig Masters, man. Um, so speak about um, how you guys came to be, um, because those are those are the first uh, really. Without me knowing about the Bounce record, um, that's that's the DJ Spinner that that I um, came to know and love. 
Thank you. Well, yep. so Krim and I grew up together. You know, we met on the block and Jigmasters initially was a four man group. One of the members um, was part of the group that I was in back in the eighties. It was me, him and another guy. And how can I, how can I say this to make it make sense? When it was the four man group, Krim mm-hmm. was always there. He came to me with the idea after I had disbanded from the prior groups to, to form Jigmasters. So Jigmasters was kind of his brainchild. Is this the um, poly- polyrhythmic addicts? Nah, this is polys was later. Okay. Polys was later. Okay. Totally different group. Yeah. So Jigmasters was a four man group. Two of the guys left and it ended up, it, you know, ended up dwindling down to me and Krim. And by that time, you know, after we we had a demonstra- a demonstration deal with East West Records in '94, we had four songs done. We had a single ready, almost ready to go. We were meeting, having meetings with product management. You know, trying to f- f- coming up with the marketing for the single and everything. Yeah. And then East West and Electra merged and turned into ERG Group. And I remember that. You know, half the half of the staff got fired, including the people that were handling our projects, so they dropped us. Um around that time too, Juggernauts was there, Supernatural was there, a- right. Eight off the Assassin a- Eight off the Assassin was there, um Das Effects was there. Um and so this was during that period. But um I say that to say that you know, after all of those years of trying to get signed and almost getting signed, mm-hmm. we decided to start the Beyond Real label. That's and right. that's when we put out the first, you know, Beyond Real in 96 and Is UD and, you know, the rest is history. And then we had like a whole stable of artists, Old World Disorder, IGO for Hazardous. That's right. There were a few of a few of them, um, you know, a few underground labels at the time. And, and you know, um, shouts to There were a lot of underground labels at the time. There, <laughs> right. were, t- there were tons of them. I know, right? <laughs> I know that was the golden era for underground. Like, I, I definitely once we started talking about, it, I got I got goosebumps, man. I was just like, man, it it automatically had a flashback about um about those years with uh you know yourself, um, Jig Masters, uh, Mister Complex, um, you know, um, Pumpkinhead, uh, like natural like, natural resources, natu- natural yeah, elements, natural Mr. Elements. Voodoo, Adagio, <laughs> bro. We can go. J. Shout out to my brother J. Live. J. Shabam Live. Shabam 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 Peace to J. Live. Before he was on Shabam before he was on Ruckus, Shamanalik. Yeah. Like it was a lot of people, man. A lot, a lot of artists. Natural elements, man. Shouts to Charlemagne too. Charlemagne. That's was right. On the show. That's right. He was. That's right. Char- Peace to Charlemagne. Yep. Yep. Um, the Beyond Real record was was the one I like. I was like automatically. Yeah. Wait till wait till you wait till you hear when one day I'm gonna reveal the sample source for that. Ooh. Yeah. Play play the record. Play the play the uh, not the remix. But the- <laughs> you right now i got goosebumps fit like <laughs> man, this is this is uh the true essence of uh, uh this is how new york became the beat and i came to be like seriously like it was built on the golden age the golden era but but really like the 90s 90s underground man like some of some of the oh, there's nothing like it came out of it man you spoke about um you guys being signed um, early on with East West, is that how you parlay the the Das FX microphone master record? Yeah, that is how that, that happened. I was I was kind of in I was in this I was in the system. <laughs> oh, when I tell you when I got that record and I looked and I saw spit out it, I was like, this dude is killing it. And it was one of my favorite. I play. I tell you, I played this record and. And when I looked, 
I I looked at the record and it was sitting right in front of my face that you know the Amateur Bar seventy four record. <laughs> I was like, and I used to just play the record, but never even thought, man, this record right here, man. This was this was this was it right here. I was like, okay, this guy is doing like he's doing crazy records right now. So I gotta I gotta give props to my man um, Jock Max that yes assist that 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 co remixed this with me. Okay, um, piece to piece to Jock Max. I did see that too. Respect, salute. Yeah, man. Yeah. So he was in the group called he was in the group called Basement Chemist that we also released on Beyond Real. Okay. But he he was an incredible rapper and beat maker, and you know I I kind of partnered up with him for mm-hmm. some of those earlier earlier records because he's from Kansas, man. Oh, wow. Kansas City, Kansas. How'd you meet him? And so I was out there um, because from a previous relationship okay. that I was in, yeah. and she was there the female was there to uh work so i basically followed her she she moved out there and i was you know just with her and i was looking for record stores (laughs) like any (laughs) vinyl junkie would do in a new city yeah yeah. and i looked i looked in the yellow pages and saw a couple of stores so i hit them hit the stores up one particular store that i went to called seventh heaven um I went asking for old records or whatever, and the guy that was there was like, "Oh, you need to come back tomorrow and speak to Jock Max. He he knows all the spots." So I so I came back, and we connected. We went digging, and then I went to his basement, and he started playing me all these incredible beats. Oh, and then he man. played me, and then he played me his group, and I was completely blown, blown away because the guys, these guys, sounded like they were straight up from New York. Right, you know, they sound like when you think of Kansas, you don't think about no. That doesn't. That's not the first vibe or sound that comes to your I mind. I think uh, Wizard of Oz when I think of Kansas. <laughs> exactly. So now nah, these guys had these guys had flavor, and I actually helped them to get a demo deal as well with Electra, mm-hmm. which also didn't pan out. But um, you know, they made some incredible records. But Jock, man, um, special dude, one of my best closest friends in the world, mm-hmm. and. Super talented, man. So he did that and he did the De La Soul remix with me. I happened to be... And those are my first two remixes. You know, those those oh. remixes came to, those remixes came to me mm-hmm. and I was out there and I just brought them in, you know, and mm-hmm. we, we made it we made it happen. Actually, the uh the the De La mix, I got a mail a a, a mail, a letter from uh Tommy Boy Records. Right. You were affiliated with kept, Tommy Boy, right? I, I believe. So uh, yeah, later. Later, okay. later. Jig Masters, they they had formed a label called Black Tommy Boy Black right. label. Yeah. Where they would where where they were trying to compete with like the Rockuses and, you know, <laughs> trying to tap into that indie market. But it was it was a little too late uh, yeah. at that point. <laughs> this is like late <laughs> this is like late nineties. Right. You know, and you double dipping because you're you you were actually on you you were doing records with Rockets too. <laughs> you like, yeah, no, nah, but that's this was post Ruckus. Oh, okay, post Ruckus. So, okay, so so Black Label was like two thousand. Oh, okay, 2000. yeah, yeah, okay. At that point, the the Ruckus situation had been, you know, was over. Um, but but I'm digressing. So the the Tommy Boy situation, I got that letter requesting to do this De La remix. That was a mind blowing experience, man. You know, I was in New York at the time when that happened, and the the way that beat came together. Um, Jock came up. We found the the sample, the, the Fender Rhodes piece together oh. in the record store. Mm-hmm. He 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 programmed the drums, a, a basic beat. He mm-hmm. had the, the the Rhodes loop. He sent me the disc, the floppies, and then I reprogrammed it, re, reprogrammed the drums to fit the vocals, and added like the my bubbly, spacey mm-hmm. things and. The shaker you played the too, bass right? line. The shaker. The shaker. I know that. <laughs> that, that yeah, that's you a know DJ that. space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, right, I did notice that, that man. Yeah, yeah. Right. So that's how that whole thing came together. Man, okay, so this record right here was really the DJ Spinner has arrived record. Like for real. Because the original, um, obviously done by JD, I was like, well, how good could 
could the, the remix be, you know? And I remember having both one, both copies. I think there was one. I think I had the one with, um, it was a picture of Mace and a little ass dog. Yeah. The super sweet steaks, baby. The super sweet steaks. Right. And I remember getting yeah. it and I was like, okay, there's the remix. I'm like, man, how how is it going to out either be as equal or outdo? And I'm telling you right now, when I heard yours, I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Man, this dude Spinner is on. He is he has arrived. This was the record for real. I actually connected with Dilla around that around that record. Ooh. That was that's when we first connected. Yeah. Um, I was doing. I was actually working uh, with Jay Smooth and Av at the Underground Railroad show on WBAI. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tribe Called Quest came up to promote Beat, Beats, Rhymes, and Life, and Dilla was with them. So that was the first time I met them was when they were on when they were on air. So we were just we, we we were talking about the machines that we use and all that type of stuff. Can you speak to his um his impact? Because there was some different shit going on with 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 JD. Can you speak about um your first thoughts about his production? And how he influenced you, your, uh, how he influenced you, because you spoke about how he influenced you as well as a pair. Yeah. Well, you know, with every genre, there's always going to be the one person that comes around and just changes everything. You know, we've seen it with rock. We've seen it with jazz, with the likes of like Coltrane and Miles Davis. Um, with rock, we've seen it with like Jimi Hendrix. And uh, with hip hop, we have a few of those. Um, I credit Molly Maul as the godfather, you know what I'm saying? Um, when it comes to samples. And I and I also have to I also, now in hindsight, um, I have to put 45 King on that on that pedestal oh, yeah. because because he came up around the same time and the way he revolutionized samples um and sampling and the way he heard samples was unlike any other, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And Dilla was like that for hip hop in general. His impact on me specifically, he taught me to think outside the box even more than I already was thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like I was already outside the box <laughs> um, because when you listen to Stakes is High remix mm-hmm. and, you know, Microphone Master. And, Absolutely. You know, the MC8 remixes, those records don't sound like anything else. No, but they don't. When you listen, but when you listen to his joints, he was a lot more unquantized in his thought process. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and a free thinker, um, not giving a F. Yeah. And, you know, loose, super loose. Yeah, I never, I never really thought to work outside of quantization. Quantization, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the guy that locks in. He didn't lock in, and he was super loose with it. And I think that's what we're left with. Yeah, all these, all these crazy loose, out uh, of control, yeah. sloppy beats that we're hearing. Yeah. it's thanks to him. Like he, it is. he was the, he's the king of that. He's the yeah. king of that. And he's all. And as far as even on the digging. The, like vinyl looking for samples yeah you know a lot of a lot of us spent tons of money on super rare records super you know obscure hard to find stuff that mm-hmm. you know collectibles you know yep. collectible records you know what i mean stuff that raises your your the value of your collection he did pretty much the opposite yes he had some expensive super rare records like Tarika Blue, you know, the record he used for Badu, for example. But there's so many dollar bin, 50 cent, two dollar holler records, cheap records. You listen to the records, you would never think to use them. Like yeah. you you just not you know the, the his choice the of samples. Project. <laughs> bro, like, like his is... his ear, the way he heard music, yeah. it was there was no, he had an inner ear like no other person. And he definitely made everyone think differently and think you can sample anything. It's yeah. really up to like how you hear and how you imagine, how you interpret the music. Yeah, man. Um, I think he had that impact. He had an impact um, on me as well. I will say this, man, about you, Spinner. You are definitely one of the most underrated producers ever. 
because of what you just said, I remember listening to the Microphone Master record. Actually, moving forward um, in years, like still to this day, one of the one of the, one of the sexiest records and one of the one of the dopest records I've ever heard was um, the Babel uh, Gaberto joint that you did. Um, was it uh, Seo uh, Se- Se- Distante? Seo Distante, yeah, yeah. The whole composition, man. I can honestly say that you're definitely. Um, one of the most underrated producers in New York or, or not even New York, just around period. Like, because we all credit Dilla for that time, but you were definitely as equal and hot during that time. You know what I'm saying? I just think that, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. But, you know, of course Dilla, Dilla did have an engine behind him with, you know, with tip and, and, um, you know, the cosine. Um, but yeah, man, I think people really need to realize that, man, like, uh, those records were incredible. Well, react, you have, you haven't, you, uh, you haven't said much. So I'm <laughs> no, curious. Right. Which, yeah. What do you have? How, how in the hell did you go from all that stuff to hanging out with making house with, records or oh, Stevie Wonder? Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm genuinely <laughs> curious because I mean, like I'm in the space now where I'm like, but I find myself just gravitating towards house music a lot more now um creatively um right. how did that happen and and when the hell did you meet stevie wonder is really is what what the <laughs> so like how, how did that happen well i gotta credit again 45 king and my man kenny dope because they they to me they're the and molly mall too all three of those dudes did both they did both they did okay yeah, man. they did both oh, they, did, right. they did they did they did hip-hop and they made house records also to correct you i never stopped Trend. I never stopped hip hop. I just slowed down. Yeah, mm. because because I'm picky, and as right. I get older, Facts. as I'm right. as I'm growing in this in the in the hip hop world, there's a lot more stuff that I can't tolerate as a as a grown man. <laughs> totally <Lyrically>. understandable. <laughs> Lyrically, I understand. So I, so I'm picky. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I try to I try to work on records that I'm really feeling. Work with MCs that I'm really feeling, but. Um, and even with Jig Masters, like we have an album in the can that we just we got to finish, yeah. and we plan to make we plan to make more records. You well, know, no, no, I, I bought the uh, I bought the uh, the last one, which was very dope. I think it was a uh, two two thousand sixteen, right? You guys did something that. like that, yeah. yeah. Resurgence, yeah. Well, we got stuff in the can. I got I got people that I've been promising records that I've been working with for a long time mm-hmm. to do projects. Apani is one of them. J Live's another one. Shabam's another one. Oh, you know, I got, and I, and I'm working on a record with homeboy Sam, man. So oh, just to man. put that, just to put that in a bottle. Oh, my God. I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done. I love yeah, making it, beats. I, I love making beats. Like I, of course. I've been buying, I've been buying samples profusely and just stashing them for the years. But to go back to answer your questions. Yep. I, I loved house music from day one. Mm-hmm. Um, I I learned about it from the beginning. As as far as like when New York was impacted, I learned about it then because I my, the dudes that I hung out with were all older than me and they were in the clubs, so they would right. tell me about it as it was popping. You know, radio played a little bit of it, mm-hmm. and it was if you were in New York in the in the eight late eighties nineties, there was no way to avoid it. If nah. you were going to the clubs, there was no way to avoid nah. it. That's right. You know, even with even within hip hop, we had it was there was a period, yep. right? Yeah, they were they were neck and neck. You know, what I'm saying right. we have there's there's house there's dope house remixes of hip hop records. Absolutely. Yeah. To me, the David Morales remix of Saturdays is incredible. Oh my God. That's right. This dope (laughs) ass house. There's some corny ones, but there's some dope, soulful underground. Clark Kent, another brother, my big bro Clark, who embraced both worlds. He understands club music. Yeah. You know, we have we have these conversations all the time. It's bigger than hip hop. It's really about good music. So so to answer your question about house and transitioning, Mm -hmm. so as a DJ I've, my priority is rocking the crowd, right? I'm not a hip hop DJ. I'm a DJ first and I play for everybody. I play good music for everybody. House just happens to be something that I love to play because I love to see people dance. Yeah. Somehow the dance got extracted from hip hop. It's, it's not promoted in yeah. mainstream anymore. You don't That's see the TikTok it anymore. Age, man. 
yeah, it's 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 you know the BPMs are slower now. Yeah, and I I come from the era of rocking parties and seeing movement and seeing movement on the dance floor. And as far as making house music, it's very gratifying when you when you could put a track together or do a remix or whatever, and you give it to a DJ. There's no red tape. They play it. People dance to it. Period. That's right. Oh, there's no yeah. politics. There's none of that. Uh, you know, it ain't hot. It's not hot on the streets. None of that kind of bullshit. Yeah. You give it to the DJ and it's all, this music is based on feeling and pure emotion. The way hip hop used to be. It ain't really like that no more. It could be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It could be. And this, and don't get me wrong, there's some dope hip hop being made, but of course it's not the mainstream stuff. You know right. what I mean? It's, it's, you got to really dig for it and search for it. I keep my ear to the underground all the time. I, I, right. you know, I kind of, I try to stay, a, stay abreast of what's happening. But when you're, when it's time for you to go out there and work as a DJ and you got to play for people, yeah. you can't play underground hip hop. You got to play what, what makes the people move. So, I got out of the quote unquote mainstream DJ circuit early. Like, you know, I made it my business around the turn of the 2000s mm-hmm. to basically slow down from that whole scene. Cause I was doing, I was working hard, especially in New York. I was like, <laughs> no, I, was I, the, I, I was, I was doing a lot of parties, man. Yeah, I remember. When, 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 but, but when, when it, when, when radio took over, like, you know, payola and the commercialization of, hip hop on the radio and people wanting to hear the same music they heard in the on the radio in the clubs every week the same records yeah the beginning is of that yeah that's when i bowed out that's when i was like nah i can't do these kind of parties anymore yeah. because Good for you, i don't want to I, I don't want to get stuck i can't get stuck i love music too much and then mm-hmm. i started traveling and going to europe going overseas going to japan going to yeah. england mm-hmm. and i'm i'm just seeing like how the oh, music it's tremendous is, out there it's, yeah, it's, it's a whole more, it's different more like, world, man. Yeah, it's a different culture. So I was like, oh, this is where I need to be. I could speak to that because, you know, I just don't play hip hop music anymore. Like when I when I DJ, I just don't. And I play every weekend. I just don't play the shit. First of all, like I, I play what I want to hear. Right. I know I'm quoting House Shoes now, who was on the show a few weeks ago. But like you said, it's just a feeling thing. And like I would prefer to play house music and see people dance. I play just ton, just tons of old stuff, man. Just tons, tons of funk. Um, you know, that catches people, atten- catches people's attention, you know, it's the that, feel good. It's the feel yeah. good, man. Yeah. Feel that's exactly, that's exactly what it is, man. Feel the feel good, feel good music, bro. You know, and, I have a, I have a party that I do called flavors, which is dedicated to nineties. Yeah. That's coming because, up in LA with uh, J-Rock. Yeah, it's coming up in LA. Yeah, exactly. Started it in New York. President. Yeah, I started that party in New York um, in 2000, uh, playing playing 90s music, and that party is very successful. And and the and the the more that time progresses, Mm -hmm. the more popular that era and that party gets because people just want to reminisce and remember what hip hop felt like back then. And it's and it's kind of it's kind of sad that we're in this state. Because yeah. <laughs> again, again, yeah. like there's some dope records being made, but there aren't. It's not recognized enough to where the masses can appreciate it. You created a theme party: the Prince, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder joints. Like I've never seen anything like it, man. And people, I'm telling you right now, if you just, got, I'm sure you can find them on YouTube. Just. Just go, just Google or go to YouTube and find DJ Spinner's um, The Prince, either Prince uh, Party or Stevie Wonder or the Michael Jackson versus Stevie Wonder. You even did a remix for MJ. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah, you know, there's so much shit we could talk about, man. How did that party come about, man? Because like, yeah. is that a Sp- that's a Spike Lee thing? Nah, it's not a Spike Lee thing. Okay. It became a, Spike Lee adapted it. Okay. When Michael, when Michael and Prince transitioned, and the reason why I'm DJing mm-hmm. those parties for 
for Spike is because I was already doing them <laughs> before, ah, before Spike. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, no, for okay. sure. Yep. So, so, I, so, so the Wonderful Party started in 2001 oh, yes. with Bobito. It was Bobito and myself playing. Okay. And then he, bow, he, then he bowed out to pursue film and other things and in sneakers. 2008. <laughs> and skill, you know, other things, books, <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I kept it go. I kept it going. So, and then the Michael Prince party, that party is called Soul Slam. We just had a, you know, we branded it that so that we're not using the artist names, right. um, you know, mm-hmm. their, of their, 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 their IPs. Right? So the Soul Slam brand started in 2002, mm-hmm. right, after, right after the Stevie won the tribute parties. And the reason that came about was... You know, I do these parties with my wife and we were, after the success of The Wonderful, we were like, who else can we do that people know, people celebrate, but also has a catalog that can rock a party all mm-hmm. night? And the next two big artists, the the, the two biggest artists yeah. are Michael and Prince. Mm-hmm. You can't really do that with an Earth, Wind & Fire or Barry White or like, you know, there aren't too many legacy artists yeah. where you can curate an entire night that speaks to youth culture, pop culture, has dance records, has underground records. The bag, the bag, the bag and, is crazy. <laughs> and, and then, you know, remixes, house mixes, hip hop mixes. Yeah. You, there aren't too many artists like that. No. Probably not, you know what I'm saying? They either speak to an older generation. I mean, that's really it. They speak to an older generation. And, yeah. and then we may have, we haven't grown up with it, but the reach is, there's a cap to the reach. Prince, Michael, especially Michael, when it comes to kids and generational influence yeah. and popularity, the kids love Mike. They love him. Okay. Prince, people love, but he's more mature. Full disclaimer, this party is not a, it's ne- it was never meant to be. And I met Prince, by the way. I met Prince. And the first thing he said to me was, he said, why does it have to be a versus party? Uh-huh. That was the first thing that came out of his mouth. So I made a conscious effort after that. And I told him it's a celebration. It's not a versus. It's not a battle. So I may have, I, in my marketing and promotion, I always tell people this is not a battle. It's a celebration. I've always thought that Prince was, Prince is it for me. Um, Stevie Wonder, your Stevie parties. And I, and I used to think like, man, like, how can he just, how can he do a part, a whole party based on Stevie? And I, and I saw your set and I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. And I see people just floating, <laughs> like literally floating in euphoria, man. It looks like the greatest stuff ever, man. I just like, man, look at Spinner, man. Like, this is incredible. Like, talk about, and, and you know Stevie. Like the greatest, he, he, like come on, man! Like, how'd you, how'd you, how, how'd that happen? Well, man, so there's been a, there were a few early encounters um, after the first wonderful party, actually after the second one because we did it twice in in uh, two thousand one. We did it first in May around his birthday, which is strategically planned we always plan it around stevie's birthday in may you know may 13th that year 9 11 happened Mm -hmm. and we did it a second time for the people as a healing so we did it in the fall and after when the party was over of all people to show up at the end was edwin birdsong he came to the party at the end and I met him and he was like, hey, man, Stevie knows about the party. He wants to talk to you. <laughs> oh. So I actually got a little shook because, <laughs> but for a reason you might not be thinking of, right. Bobito and I had done these these uh, underground mixtapes called Wonder Wrote It around that time. Okay. And we were, they were hot on the streets. Wow. He caught wind of it. He he heard of it. So I was concerned that when I got on the phone with him, there might have been some yeah. issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? But are you freaking out? 
I was freaking out a little bit. So I spoke to him <laughs> and he was like, yeah, man, I heard about the party. I hope to experience it one day. And I also heard about this, this mix that you did. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'd love to, and I and I and I'd love to hear it. You started, you started farting oh. and shit, like you're nervous, like. I love, I, I, <laughs> like I'm nervous. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. To this day, I think I ended up giving him a copy of that. Actually, right. the second time I, the second time I met him was I th- was like 2004, backstage at the Apollo. All I went right. to go see him perform. And um, Richie Havens was on that bill Ooh. that day, and so was I met I met backstage. Richie I Havens, met, uh, are you kidding me? Yeah, and I met uh, what's his name, Johnny Kemp, that made Just Got Paid. Yeah, he was yeah. backstage too. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, but I met him, and I, I think I handed him the mix CD, the yeah. one that wrote it in that moment. Um, but again, you know, full circle. Yeah. Paying tribute to a legend, he recognizes that I'm honoring him, and it just led to a great, a great rapport, a great relationship. And as a result of that, I've been to his crib, I've been to his oh. studio, I have done two remixes for him that didn't come out. One of them's on YouTube; you can find it. It's called "My Love Is On Fire." Um, oh, yeah. And I opened up for him at the Super Bowl in New Orleans. Ooh. And in 2000, I think that was 2012, he does these events at the United Nations called A Message of Peace. Yeah. He's an ambassador for peace for the United Nations, and he puts on these concerts. Um, and he called me to um, open for him at the oh UN. Oh, my God. That's man. cool. Listen, man. <laughs> are, you, you know, are you still to this day? I mean, first of all, us. Many many levels of cool and and flexed, you, like you super flex. Yeah, that's super on, flex. That is a super flex, man. Like top three greatest goat all time. Like musical genius. They you know was pen you know a musical genius. Eddie Murphy. That was Eddie Murphy's quote about Stevie Wonder. He was. Uh, that, you know that was his, <laughs> and that's the truth, right? Am I saying musical team? Um, but do you getting calls from Stevie? Like, um, like man, I I can't even just You're just hanging out, but, driving, driving to the supermarket. You get a phone call. You look at your phone, and Stevie one is calling you. Like, that's, bro, that's pretty, that's pretty I, wild. I have missed, I have I have I have missed calls from Stevie. With yeah, that's incredible. Out. Yeah, oh God, God bless. That's crazy. <laughs> Freaking out, like, why? How come I didn't see this dude call me and he left me voice messages? Oh man, I have voice, I have voice messages saved on my phone that I need to actually archive. Uh, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Oh, man. That's so. I would feel so bad. I felt like I, I, <laughs> I would feel so bad. This. Imagine, like, you put that this. shit on Do Not Disturb and Stevie calls you. That's a phone call you never want to miss. No, you know, no, not at all. You, not at all. You even if he calls you at like three in the morning, you got to answer yeah. that call. You know, you can, you can set your iPhone up to have emergency contact. So even if your shit's on Do Not Disturb, it like it'll certain contacts will ring. Make sure you put Stevie in that, just in case you got to yeah. put your shit on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> That's a sure shot, right there. Yeah. That's a sure shot. That's crazy, man. man. Oh my goodness! Wow. Listen, I mean, I, I mean. I mean, just, 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 we're talking about level, levels and upon levels upon levels of greatness. We have to bubble wrap DJ Spinner. <laughs> Your homies with, with Jeff too, as well. The great Jazzy Jeff. I was going to say, if there's two DJs on this planet that need to be bubble wrapped, is Jeff and Spinner. Absolutely. Like, wow, you're putting me on the same, the same no, level as the Jazzy Jazz. No, 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 no. I've, I've heard, I've heard you DJ plenty of times, man. Um, and 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 literally, there's only really. That's why I said you're underrated. I don't, you don't get the credit, man. And and you should. There's some bubble wrappable DJs, and 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 I can only really think of. I mean, there's there's Jeff, there's there's yourself. I'm serious, bro. I'm not, I'm not playing. Um, and I would definitely say Scratch. Scratch is a beast. Yeah, like Scratch is just. I mean, he's 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 not human. No, <laughs> he's part no. he's part machine. He is man. <laughs> I mean, um, but look at what you've accomplished. Do you ever sit down and think about that? Like, man, like 
what is going on? <laughs> like seriously, I'm getting, I'm missing calls from Stevie Wonder. Like, I'm thinking of the next. I'm always thinking about the next thing, man. What's I'm next? Always ben? moving forward. Um, bro, just I got to make a new album. That's my priority right now. Another another BBE type record though, like where I'm stretching out. Okay, okay. That, that's what I'm talking about. For your bag, when you when you're sitting down now. First of all, what are you working on? What equipment are you working on now? Oh yeah, I work. Access. I work with um. This. <laughs> He's gonna flex right now. Watch. He's gonna be like that. <laughs> do, 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 do. Here comes the flex. I already saw his mixer. He has the spin knob mixer, which is crazy. Ah, there you go. Oh, Team Machine. Old yeah. Faithful. Old team. Faithful. Ticket Team Machine, yeah. baby. Yes. I just want to hang out with you, Spinner. I do, man. I, I do, man. Like, you know, like, I let's, think you owe me. Let's go buy a, some records. Yeah. Let's like, go buy some like, records. We're not, yeah, yeah. I, I know, yo, I know the couple spots up here. Like, I live in White Plains. And, and when I tell you there's a couple spots that are untapped. There's a couple spots in Connecticut, oh, too. Norwalk. I'm telling Oh, yeah. Norwalk, too. Yup. There's a spot in Norwalk. I'm telling yep. you, not even touched. You can tell. Really? Like, uh, dude, I found my old record. Oh, yeah. That's right. Show him. He was digging, and he found his record. And the guy just gave it to him. I found this record. The True Criminal record. Wow. I remember that. Crazy. It, it was it was a fourteen dollar record, and I was like, "This is my record." And I was like, "My my kid, my sons were with me, and they were like, they were even surprised. Like, they was like, I I think that was a a, a, a for the first time. Wow, Dad's kind of cool <laughs> moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So cool I was moment. like, "This is you know, this is my crew. This is it. My name's on it. You know, E Dow Dow. Anyway, I got the spots, man." <laughs> Um, you know, I'll treat, but not on the records because I know you got money. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> can we play like one of his, one of his soulful house music records? I mean, just one of those records. And yeah. Go ahead. Stevie Wonder record you can play. I think you should play days like this. Cause that's the anthem. That's the one everybody knows for the listeners who are, who may not know it. That's the one to play because I just I just looked at YouTube today and that joint has like 2.7 million plays on there. Oh shit! Man. So it's quite popular. Yeah, this shit is. There you go. You thought Steve was coming after your ass for this record, weren't you? <laughs> nah, we good. We good on that one. He loved this one. Yeah. I still think that you guys should do a, like a full album. Ooh. I wish. That's on him. <laughs> yeah. You can bring it back. Tell him to bring out the old. Just don't um, miss that phone call because if he, you know, he might be like, right? you know what? I'm going to do an album with Spinner. He picks up the phone. Do, 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 do. Look at how this shit is crazy. As if they've never seen a heart in love. Though I see them, I don't care. What year did you make this? 2005. Can't wait with the future holes, man. You've always been um, upper echelon with it. Um, you got some of my favorite records. You have the greatest, I think, one of the greatest party records ever, man. And I, I, I'm truly looking forward to, man. Like, like I'm a year older than you, but it doesn't matter, man. Like, I'm a fan, man. And and I truly appreciate. We appreciate you coming on the drop shop, man. Yeah, appreciate that it. next Soul Slam, we there. Don't worry. Oh we yeah, we. we coming. I can't wait. Cause it was last month too. I saw. The, I saw. I saw the video. Thank you. Yeah. Nah, oh, those man. parties are fun. Those parties are always fun, especially the ones. Um, well, the the one we just did in Fort Green Park with Spike Lee. That was like thirty thousand people. I yeah, saw it was craziness. That. It is incredible. 
It looked like a, it, some some of that looked like an episode of um <laughs> like a festival. It was almost like no, a festival. No, so, you know, like a Dave Chappelle type. You know, because they were like everybody was dancing, and he had the guy pop locking and everything. <laughs> It looked. Nah, it was, everybody it was, was happy. It was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful. beautiful. It was like it was like a Brooklyn Woodstock. Yeah, That's it great. was, That's man. Beautiful, man. That's great. That's, That's one good. thing about Brooklyn I do like, other than the traffic, like, and and the raccoon and the raccoons in Brooklyn because they kind of hardcore. Like raccoons in Brooklyn, they be front. They be they be wild in Brooklyn, bro. I don't know if you ever ran into a, a raccoon in Brooklyn, but. Them shit. I, don't, I don't want to. I definitely don't want yeah, to. Yeah, they, they they bought it, bought it, bro. <laughs> Trust me. I work in Industry City, bro, and the motherfuckers are like, "What's up?" <laughs> like, but there's nothing like a Brooklyn party, man. And and what you do, man, it's just this platform that we have. It's loose. It's loose conversation, man. I don't want to be all stuffy and off of a paper and hey about your, you know, whatever. This show was just like really just chopping it up. And um, yeah, man, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you. One thing I want to plug is my um, mm-hmm. my Apple radio show. I have a show oh, on Apple man. Music. Oh. How in the world did I miss that? Yeah. I meant to bring that shit up to you. I'm so sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so good. I want to plug that because I've been is putting it here a lot and there? of work. Hit is called Here to There here Radio. To there. It's basically it's after, I named it after the BBE album. That's right. That's dope. Here to There Radio. And it's... um. It's basically me celebrating everything that's iconic and legendary about good music, black music, soul, R and B, funk, hip hop, yes. house. I play everything, and I've done. I've had some incredible guests on my show. I, yeah, I've seen. Oh, like, and, and you're like in. It, you're like 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 a lot of um, episodes in now, right? Yeah, I'm like 146. This week will be show 146. Wow. That's crazy. Salute. And 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 last week's show was um my tribute to Melba Moore for her birthday, and I spoke to I literally spoke to Mel, Melba Moore today. She called me to thank me. Man, for, I see I see Melba Moore on IG, and she is like she's wonderful. active. She's wonderful, right? She, she's active, man. People, please tune into is it here to there? Here to their radio, yes. Yes, here to their radio, Apple Radio. You just did a Forty Five King episode. Oh man, I gotta listen. Yes. To that shit. Yeah, yeah, it's and it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, real, real quick, um, before we go, is Spinner a, a resident or are you? Um, after you get back from f- traveling the world, because you know he flexed on us like he's going to Spain. But I started doing these slow jam sets called Galactic Quiet Storm during the pandemic on on Twitch. It was every Thursday, and we decided to b- bring this party to light in real person. So we started doing them at this new spot called, what is it called? Blues. Hold on. Let me go to my Instagram. That's the only way I'm going to be able to see it. (laughs) I want to get this right. Yeah. I want to get this right. Yeah. And your Twitch is, your Twitch, your Twitch is, is popping too. You got like 20, you got like 20,000 followers on Twitch and shit. Damn. Yeah, man. So, you know, that got 19 followers on Twitch (laughs) (laughs) and growing. (laughs) Boss. That that happened during the pandemic because I hosted some of my legendary events. You know, the wonderful party turned twenty years old during Man. the pandemic. Oh so my I did god, are you event. serious? Oh my. yeah, I did a whole stream for the twentieth anniversary during the pandemic, and and also on. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but they did a whole uh, Stevie Wonder birthday party on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I yes. and I closed it out. I closed it out on my Twitch, on Instagram. So it went through Instagram. Yeah, yeah I remember it, seeing on that. On Twitch. So, you know, these kind of events really boosted the numbers Man. real crazy during the pandemic. Like, that party is going to live forever, bro. For real. Like, you're going to be doing <laughs> You're literally going to be. I, you know, you so. won't be a slave to it because it's wonderful, man. You started something that that literally people like thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are are looking forward to. Well, the 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 joy in it, and what keeps it interesting is, I always try to find new ways to play the music. And bro, I'm still finding new Stevie Wonder discoveries after 20 years. Ooh. I'm learning about stuff that he was involved with 
recordings. Man. You know, there's even a Melbourne, like I was going through my Mel, like looking for Melbourne Moore music for the show. And I found there's a Melbourne Moore record with Stevie Wonder <laughs> on it. And I found that she covered a, a Stevie Wonder record in like 1970. Cause I didn't even know about. I do have one more question about the whole stem works now, like stems. Like, are you excited about that? So I sent you a couple of beats where I freaked stems heavy. If you listen to um the whole, what is it called? The whole darn summer. Did you hear that beat yet? Play it. Then I'll explain to you how I put that beat together. And then you understand how much I appreciate stems. <laughs> Turn it up. Just when I thought, just when I thought Vitamin D had the greatest flip of seven minutes of funk. Oh my God. What are we, what is happening? of you bro like for real like I, I, I am man i can't believe it man like i just because i've seen it since since your, your days of bingham to be i don't know man you made it <laughs> man i'm still I'm making st- it i still serious. got i got a lot of work to do man i know but I, you're so I, I, I you're so moving. beloved man and and that's the beautiful thing man i truly appreciate all that man like i'm a you know, I'm a super fan of all that, B. Can I, I want you guys to hear one more before we go. I yeah, sent you yeah, a joint. Yeah. I sent you a joint called Wow, It's Really Good. While the record is loading, speaking of speaking of stems, um Serato Stems Wall, your DJing is a f- fucking game changer, man. It Bruh, is, I've, it been, is... I've been I've been fr- I've been freaking people out with that shit. Oh, so, it is so, so dope, hard. Bro. <laughs> It I've is been so freaking, dope, man. freaking people out, man. Like, especially when you're in, when you, when you're in key with 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 the other, you know. What I'm oh, saying? it's like, wild. Yeah. It is so wild. Got Rick James saying some shit there. If you yeah, oh my god. Nice, I know. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. I'll take that snare, bro. You can just eat. You can just <laughs> text text it to me, bro. See, I love, I love, I love the space. Like, 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 I can tell. Like, we we come from the same, the same. We love space for, for, cause I don't know if you if you are, but I'm th- I'm definitely thinking about people uh, rhyming or singing on joint. Like, you know, and the space is always good, man. Like, you some, know what simplicity. that is, right? You know what that is, though, right? I don't. Uh, yeah, fire and desire. Yeah, the beginning of fire and desire. Yeah, yeah come on, but I mean, yeah, come on. I was like, love them and leave them. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what I want yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah like, come on, bro. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm 53. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, man. Me, and my sister, my older sister. I had an older sister and a younger bro- and an older brother, and and we was playing spades, eating Doritos, listening to these records. 
you know, say, so I know, him, man. Like, and I was the young DJ with the forty fives. Like, come on, shorty, and I have like, let's dance to the drummer's beat and Foxy. Remember that? Get off. Get off. Of course, it's one Boss. of my favorites. Oh man, amazing record. But man, thank you so much. Hey, react. We're going out to the joint that we pause. We're going out to the joint that we came in on. No. Oh, oh, yeah. oh this one's this crazy, shit. too. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, at the chop shop. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. DJ Spinner. That's right. Hey, you it. It gets better. <laughs> Trust me. I got no words for that shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>